All right. Hello, hello, hello. So today you're going to discover one important and essential tip for more success in life. This is like not only more success, but less anxiety, less, you know, more happiness overall, more peace of mind. And let me give you an example of this. This is something that I paid a coach thousands and thousands of dollars to learn. And it's going to sound like a simple concept, but it's one of those simple concepts that we never actually apply. So the, the goal for today is that this touches you enough that you start to apply this in your life so you can have greater peace, greater knowledge, greater connection with God, fellow beings, and your relationship with your spouse. Now, to illustrate this tip, I'm going to tell you a quick story. Last week, I was down in Peru. I was in the northernmost city in, city in Peru called Iquitos. Iquitos is in the middle of the Amazon jungle. And as you can imagine, with any developing nation, it's pretty crazy there on the streets. So anything that gets into Iquitos, they have to ship it by boat or by airplane. There's no roads in there. It's a town of about, city of about 500,000 people. So it's very big, population-wise. And there's a lot of people packed into a very little space. So when we show up at the airport, we hop on a shuttle that's waiting for us, and we head over to the hotel where we're going to be staying at, the, the uh, Reina Victoria Hotel in downtown Iquitos. As we pull into the hotel, we're starting to get off the bus, and one of the tour guides who's accompanying us, a local, gets out, and he kind of walks to the middle of the street. Now, these roads are very, very narrow. They're about half the size of a typical two-way American street. He gets out, and he kind of stands in the middle of the road, and I'm I'm curious, but knowing what I know about Central America and South America, I'm like, okay, he's probably watching for any traffic. And sure enough, as I'm getting off the bus, this little moto taxi, which are these little motorcycles, they're motorcycles with three wheels. It has a little carriage in back and it has the motorcycle in front, comes zooming past, hits a puddle, splashes my pant leg, and I'm like, wow. I mean, I feel like I almost got ran over. And the hustle and bustle down there is just intense. It's like complete overload for my senses. There's exhaust fumes, there's the smell of trash, there's the hot human breeze, there's the sound of these moto taxis, there's people yelling, there's people coming up and wanting to ask me for money or sell me things. I mean, it's like a total overload on all the senses. So it's feeling very, it's feeling very overwhelming. Now, fast forward. A couple hours later, I've checked in the hotel, I put my bags in my backpack and everything in my hotel room, and about five stories up on the top of the hotel, there's this beautiful roof deck with this pool, and it's like a completely quiet oasis. So I go up there, I take a swim in the pool, I have my laptop, I'm doing a little bit of planning about like long-term thinking about my business, and I, I have my shirt off and I'm just leaning over the, the railing of the roof, and I'm watching all the hustle and bustle of the city going down, it's right by an intersection, and I see the light go red, boom, Half the street stops, boom, everyone's rushing past. The few cars, a lot of moto taxis, pedestrians, the light switches, and then boom, the traffic goes in the other way. It's just like incessant, nonstop. And as I'm looking over, there's this bus that passes by with an open top, and I'm looking down there, and there's all the local people, families, there's a little girl in a pink dress, and as I'm looking over the edge, she happens to look up in the air and she just kind of stares at me, because you can imagine there's like a gringo white American in this city of Iquito. So she's looking up at me and I smile at her and wave and she's in this little pink dress and she looks up at me and waves back. And as I'm sitting up there just watching this, I'm in this pocket of peace, of contemplation, of centeredness, and of wholeness. And then it hits me. This is just like life. This is just like business. That sometimes when we're in the thick of things, when we're down in the mix with the day-to-day, -day, the to-do list, running kids around from place to place, worried about, you know, what are we gonna get for groceries? What are we gonna eat for dinner? What am I gonna wear today? In a business sense, where are my next project gonna come from? Uh, we have deadlines that we need to meet. I got client meetings today. Like this just keeps us on this never-ending, incessant hamster wheel. Being on the hamster wheel spikes our cortisol levels which is a chemical in the body that is released when we're under stress. And what doctors have shown is that this like completely attacks our joints, it attacks our immune system, and we become, literally we become sicker because of the stress. So as I'm sitting up there, this little epiphany happens. And I realize, I'm like, this is why quiet contemplation, planning, and thinking is so important. Keith Cunningham, who's wrote a number of best-selling books. He's a, he's a chief financial officer. He teaches a lot of stuff about finances and accounting. Has a book called The Road Less Stupid. And in the book, he recommends that you spend one entire morning every single week with thinking time. So my invitation is this, the critical tip is this, like the question is, are you taking time out of your day to think?
Now, as entrepreneurs, as business owners, architecture firm owners, typically what we think is, I don't have time to do that. I can't take out four hours of my week just to think and plan. I can't take out a day out of my month to review my month and then plan for the next month. Well, what I've discovered is like Stephen Covey says, we need to sharpen the saw. And he's talking about the old parable that if you had, you know, five, if he had five hours to, to chop down a tree or saw down a tree, he'd spend 30 minutes sharpening the saw and then a couple hours cutting down the tree as opposed to 10 hours cutting down the tree with a dull saw. Beautiful, beautiful lesson from Peru. So the question for you is, when in your life are you taking the time to think and contemplate? Because if you don't have time to think and contemplate, you don't have time to plan, that is a surefire sign that you absolutely need to do it.